Hey, Math 20-2. Today so we're going to look at rates. First off, let's investigate the difference between rates and ratios. New Ad a Stats Agency conducted a survey of 2,943 Canadians between the ages of 18 and 34 on their web, mobile, and social network habits. They found that this group sent, on average, 23 texts per day. Prompted by the survey, Rachel and Sarah decided to record the number of text messages they sent per day on Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday as part of their ComTech project. They would compare their findings with the findings of the survey. So here's Rachel's and Sarah's text data. A says a comparison of one number to another with the same units is called a ratio. Same units, that's a ratio. Compare the number of texts Rachel sent on Friday to the number of texts Sarah sent on Friday and write this in the form A to B and in fractional form. So on Friday, Rachel sent 81 and Sarah sent 54. So 81 to 54, it wants it in a simplified form. So we can divide both these by 27 and we get 3 to 2. That's a simple, simplified ratio form of A to B. In fractional form, that's 3 over 2. All right. Write a ratio in reduced form comparing the number of texts Sarah sent on Friday to the number of texts Rachel sent on Friday. Well, we did Rachel to Sarah last time, so now we're doing Sarah to Rachel, so it should be 54 to 81, or 2 to 3, or as a fraction, 2 to 3. C, compare the ratio found in A to the one found in B. Is there a difference between the two ratios? Well, yeah, they're not equal, that's for sure. Three halves doesn't equal two thirds. But we would call these reciprocals, all right? So they are reciprocals of each other. A comparison of quantities which cannot be expressed in the same units is called a rate. Rachel sent texts at a rate of 165 in three days. Express the total number of texts Sarah sent over three days as a rate. So if you add up all those texts Sarah sent, we would get 117 texts in those three days. Part two says a unit rate is a rate expressed with a denominator of one. Express the total number of texts Sarah sent over three days as a rate per day. All right, so she sent 117 in three days. Well, 117 over three days, well, we divide everything by three and you get 39 texts per day. All right, that's her average. Part E says, Sarah continues to text at the same rate as she did in part D. How many texts does she send in one month? So in part A, we said Sarah was texting 117 in three days or 39 texts per day. How much does she do in one month? Well, 39 texts per day. And she does that for 30 days. Well, our days would cancel out. That denominator divided by that numerator, we no longer have any days left. We have a total number of texts. That's our only unit. So 39 times 30 gives us 1,170 texts in those 30 days or in that one month. All right. Rates and ratio summary then. Whereas a ratio compares quantities with the same rates, a rate compares quantities with different rates. Typically, a ratio compares quantities of the same type of object, so no units included. Unless stated otherwise, ratios are always simplified and can be written in either the form A to B or the form A over B. A rate is a specific type of ratio. A rate's a comparison between two quantities where one is changing relative to the other with different measuring units for the two quantities. And a unit rate is a rate expressed with a denominator of one. For example, 25 meters in two seconds would be a unit rate of 12 and a half meters per second. All right. Using proportional reasoning, unit analysis, and unit rates to solve some rate problems. 
Many rate problems can be solved using proportional reasoning or unit analysis or unit rates. Kim and Cole were given the following problem to solve. Tommy purchases three bottles of vitamin water for $4.95. After paying, he receives a text message from his wife informing him that some more of his friends are coming to visit. He goes back into the store and purchases four more bottles. What's the total amount he paid for the seven bottles of vitamin water? Well, Kim's work used proportional reasoning and Cole's work was done by converting to a unit rate. So if we look at Kim's work, $4.95 for three bottles, there's a rate, dollars over bottles, puts it in a proportion, how many dollars would he have to spend to get seven bottles? So he cross multiplies and he goes 495 times 7 would equal 3 times x and you divide both sides by 3 and you get 495 times 7 divided by 3 that comes up to 1155 total. All right. You look at Cole's work. He went 495 $4.95 for 3 bottles. How much is it per bottle then? So you go 4.95 divided by 3 and you get $1.65 per bottle. Now he bought seven bottles and if each bottle was $1.65, he can figure out his total. So seven times $1.65 is also $11.55. So you can do it either way. It doesn't matter which method you choose. Example two, Paul hosted an annual wrap-up party for his hockey team last year. This year he's going to host the party again, and like last year, he's going to serve prime rib roast. Well, the guy has great taste, not sparing any expense. Last year he bought 8 kilograms of prime rib roast for $173.12. This year he bought the roast for ten thirteen a pound. So last year he bought 8 kilograms for this price. Now he's buying it for ten thirteen per pound. Use unit analysis in your work to determine which rib roast was more expensive. Well, let's look at last year's rib roast. All right, last year he bought eight kilograms for $173.12. So $173.12 for eight kilograms. What would his unit rate be? Well, let's divide those out. Figure what the price per kilogram is. 173.12 divided by eight. It's 2164 per kilogram. So that was last year's price per kilogram. This year he's getting rib roast for 1013 a pound. So let's look at this year's cost. All right, ten dollars and thirteen cents for one pound. For one pound. We want to change that into kilograms, so let's use unit conversion, unit analysis, we're told that one kilogram is 2.2 pounds. So I want to get rid of the pounds, so let's put our 2.2 pounds up here. That equals one kilogram. Now if I do unit analysis and I'm multiplying, any denominator can be reduced with any numerator, so my pounds will reduce out. I'm left with 10.13 times 2.2 all divided by one. Or I get a price of $22.29. $22.29 per kilogram. Great, I've done my work and now let's answer the question. Which rib roast was more expensive? Well, obviously $22.29 is more expensive than $21.64 per kilogram. So we'd say this year's rib roast costs more. Alright, this year he had to pay more for those rib roasts. Let's look at example three. Property owners are required to pay property tax on an annual basis. The property tax amount is based on the mill rate. It's called a mill rate because the number is expressed in mills where one mill is one-tenth of a percent. And the property tax is also based on the assessed value of the property. So to calculate property taxes, some municipalities use this formula property tax equals the assessed value divided by a thousand multiplied by the mill rate. If Charlene paid $1,924.39 in property tax last year when the mill rate was 4.6038, what is her home's assessed value to the nearest dollar? 
So all we're doing here is solving an equation. We know most of the variables. We're going to be asked to figure out the assessed value. So we know how much she paid into this formula. We know the property tax was $1,924.39. We don't know the assessed value, but if we divide that by 1,000 and multiply it by the mill rate, which we do know is 4.6038, we should be able to figure out the assessed value. There's only one variable left there. All right. So to do this, let's get rid of this denominator of 1,000. Multiply both sides by 1,000. 1,000 times 1924.39 will equal our assessed value times our mill rate. That denominator of 1,000 is now gone. And now to get rid of that 4.6038, it's being multiplied by the assessed value. I want to divide both sides by that number now. So we had 1,000 times 1924.39 divided by the mill rate of 4.6038, and we're left with the assessed value of the property. So that's just calculator work then, all right? So the assessed value should be, if you use your calculators properly, $418,000. Nice property. That's a decent amount. How much does a property tax bill change for the current year if a property is assessed 10% lower and the mill rates increase to 5.2133? Well, let's figure out the new assessed value. All right, step one, let's figure out the new assessed value. 10% lower than what that one is. All right, so I've got $418,000. And I'm decreasing 10%. So if you think about that, that means I'm really keeping 90% of it. I'm right? keeping 90% of the cost. We're losing 10%, so I'm going to keep 90% of that cost. So I multiply by 0.9. So that gives me a new property value of $376,200. Let's go to our property tax then. Our formula for property tax says the assessed value well, 376, 200 over 1,000 multiplied by the new mill rate, which is 5.2113. So that's all calculator work. We can do that right in our calculators and figure out what the property tax should be. That new property tax is $1,960.49. The question says, how much does her property tax bill change? for the current year. So last year she paid 1924.39. This year it's 1960.64. So the change is a subtraction of those two, 1960.49. Take away last year's 1924.39. So change in her property tax bill was $36.10. All right. That's what that question was asking. Great. You've got your assignment. You know which ones to do. Get after it.